true. Yeah. And, and, and talking about five years later, mm. there is a, a picture that I spotted early this week where, where let's call them cavemen, or for lack of a better word, our ancestors, they were, they were, they were carrying a heavy haulage, wheeling it along, but their wheel was square. And along comes an expert like you who says, I've got these two round wheels. Could you maybe give me a, a moment to show you how they work? And the two ancestors were like, we are way too busy for mm -hmm. an expert input right now. So do you... I get that every day. So do you, do you, every day. Look at that. Yeah. And, no, and how do you no. navigate that? And still, you know, I'm totally, I'm totally yeah. glad. I say, guys, throw away the legacy. Start again. And start again. And let me show you how you can yeah. do it. Because really, we can do the changes fast and not expensive yeah. and it's intuitive you know we just remember you build an app you give them an app it's yes. on the internet in a web page it is unbelievable the platform doesn't keep touch the platform has been yes. built you know consensus has built an amazing platform on the using ethereum but it has all the tools all the interfaces so the um the project could be done in three four months we did project coca um, which is the, the project we did for the replacement of the RTGS system at the Reserve Bank, we did it in three months. For the Reserve Bank? For yeah. the Reserve Bank, yes. Three wow. months. Look at that. You tell yeah. me. Talk, you know? Talking talk about three months, yes. Talking about three months, if we were to see, if we were to see blockchain, not as a technology, but more as a superpower that you and your colleagues at Consensus have kind of like mastered how to navigate it, how to deploy it, and how to push new frontiers of what's possible with this superpower. Uh, 2035, Africa's population has doubled. If you have this superpower, what's possible in terms of the, the milestone that you, you desire? for the continent to have realized in terms of use cases and leveraging your muscle memory as consensus and your superpower ecosystem, whether it's governments or it's private sector or it's individuals wanting to diversify and go into new careers. So in terms of 2035, we are now 2 billion. Your message to those 2 billion in terms of what they should do now leading to that two billion milestones where supply chains will be, will be under constraints, waste management will be under constraint, energy supply will be under constraint, and a whole lot of, I mean, cash, cash will be under constraint. Mm -hmm. We're already having cash in transit, robberies, a whole lot of things that make cash not viable, but a cashless society could be viable to the two billion in terms of the reserve bank minting or the coin mint, minting that, that, that level of currency. So, Blockchain as a superpower, it might not be the magic pill to solve everything, but in terms of it has so much to offer as a maturing opportunity. What would you like to tell those two billion citizens of this continent to say, help is over here. If you just plug into this superpower as it emerges, we've ticked so many boxes already. Can we go in that direction? What could you tell them in terms of what's possible? Okay, so of course, because the blockchain creates this immutable ledger that has the complete yes. order trial, nobody can change it, it's transparent, yeah. it uses a programmable um, functions yeah. that we call smart contracts, um, it's decentralized, it's all digital. Yes, smart contracts. Because of that, the, you yeah. know, the first thing that I would do in Africa, of course, it's we have the biggest um, challenge in terms of the fact that we have such corruption taking place. And, um, you know, I don't, you haven't heard my presentation, but I give a presentation that I explain why it's happening. And it's happening not because, you know, it's Africa, but it's because we, the baby boomers, created a, a, a way of uh, accounting for transactions that gives yes. uh, room for this to happen. 
you know, the, the way we, we yeah. centralize, the way we rely on, on, on intermediaries, the way that we rely on auditors, all of that, it's so uh, insistent that we create an environment to allow fraud. That's bottom line. So Satoshi says, instead of you having all these wall gardens where you write your own ledger and you allow collusion and you allowed, you know, um, money to disappear because you have control in your own books. What happens if you write the books, okay, of whatever transaction yes. and you write it with all the actors writing the same books at the same time? Yes. So if you're the buyer and the seller, we write the general ledger at the same time and a copy of our ledger goes to the taxman, to the auditors, to other regulators, to the to the, let's assume in the government, the, the taxpayer can see how the money was spent. And this ledger, nobody can cheat because you immediately can pick up if someone cheating. So don't you think that we should start from base? The base is how do we account for the billions of money that we have at our disposal and we use it for the public good and we account every cent transparently so that everybody can look in their apps he said, oh, I want to see how my municipality is spending my municipal assessment rates. Or let me see how the Minister of yes, Finance yes. is spending my taxes. And on that basis, you can even give them a rating. Remember, like an Airbnb, you get a rating for behavior. We rate the ministers, we rate the government, we rate any public ser servant that is there to serve the people. And the technology allows you all this. You can vote electronically, transparently, without having anybody to commit fraud in the in the in the in the voting. You don't need to go and vote in a school. You can vote electronically. This technology is very secure. So what I'm saying is that this technology has the magic bullet, as you say, to actually uplift a country out of its um, legacy. Uh, accounting systems that allowed all these uh, company failures like Steinhoff, VBS, now Wirecard, Wirecard, really? Wirecard? That was such a simple mistake by the auditors that, uh, that they verified the bank account in Philippines based oh, on yes. rubbish, rubbish information. <laughs> Two billion euros. You just accept the confirmation from a random person. <laughs> Not really. So don't get me started. Like company was totally fraud, you know, but all those frauds can happen because of the way we have invented record keeping. So that's why Satoshi says, no, not only is going to be a group effort that everybody can see, but we're going to give you a mathematical formula so nobody can cheat it. And this formula can actually change depending on the circumstances, to make it even harder for, yeah. for people to cheat. So, so do you understand that that is what I'm saying? Let's make sure that we clean the foundation. Once the foundation is clean and we have yes. transparency of where the money goes, then it's so easy to pay for donations, to contribute to NGOs, to, to want to save the whales. Because if you know that the money goes directly yeah. to save the whale, everybody will participate. And they are now any more by, and no more world gardens. This business about having this obsession with my country, your country, we are one. We are one, and this internet will allow us to be one. You know, and that's why the world that we're building, it's totally interoperating. So not only inter interoperate between countries, it interoperates between assets. So in future, a token of a security, uh, equity, bond, yes. money market instrument will be traded for um, a, a, represent, a token representing the Mona Lisa or the Bush Khalifa or any, any a Lamborghini or your collection of wines. And you'll be able to trade them interchangeable, real time with your finger on an app. And then you're going to choose what coin that's going to be thousands of coins, thousands of stable coins. You know, I say a coin, a stable coin is something, is yes. a digital representation of money that is backed by collateral, different types of collateral. So you choose the stable coin you're gonna use and all these coins are going to be interchangeable. 
For example, when Libra comes into the world, you're going to go into the Libra ecosystem, and if you are in Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp, you're going to use Libra. But then if you want to come out because you want to use some other app or some other functionality, you will be able to choose and try them and, and so forth. And also the best part for me, I have to tell you, is how it will empower women. Why? Because yes. women, we have seen time and time again that women, if you give them a loan, they will, have, they will repay it. Women have got a better chance of repayment than a man. And if you can give them even micro loans, they can make, they can multiply that. And if that money can be protected and they don't have to tell the husbands who might be abusing them that they're earning this money. And so do you understand that micro payments are easier in a, in a blockchain environment because there are no intermediaries, their money is transferred real time. So the cost of maintaining the ecosystem is very low. So you could be doing transfers of 10 Rand every five minutes and it's not a big deal. But if you do an electronic transfer of funds for 10 Rand, the bank is going to charge you more bank charges than the 10 Rand you're transferring. So you don't transfer in the internet 10 Rand. So, but with blockchain and, and cryptocurrencies and stable coins, that's going to change completely. So imagine the possibilities of all these women being able to generate income and never have to go and stand in a queue in a bank or have to be subjected to their husband stealing the money from them because they'll have their own private key. And then also the one that I love the most, you know, and I can't wait for this to happen, is that we should not anymore have to ask people in social security or pension funds or, or any other people depending on the government to stand in a queue in times of COVID. That money, which is like a helicopter money that gets given to the, the individual, it must go into their private uh, e-wallet real time. You know, I don't know if you've been reading how many delays there are in, in, in paying this money to people. It is unacceptable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, for, me, it's, for me, it's criminal because the technology is there <laughs> to make that possible so that that doesn't happen. No more fraud in, the, in, the, in, in, in doing these payments. Um, and, and therefore, I'm saying if they don't implement the technology, then I don't know if they are truly committed to fighting corruption because this is the technology that... Um, that it's there, you know, the other one, um, the technology is very good to yeah. prevent corruption in procurement. That look at this whole debacle on the PPE procurement, how people could steal um, something that was needed to save lives. It, for me, it's, it's inhumane. But you see what I'm saying, that the system allows this. And that's why, yeah. you know, like, as, you know, I was trained as an auditor. In auditing, they teach you, you put internal controls not because you don't trust the staff, but because you want to ensure that nothing comes to their head that thinks, oh, I can steal. I mean, the controls are so tight that, you know, that, that idea doesn't cross anybody. You eliminate else. the gap. Yes. Exactly. You eliminate the gap. Exactly. So that's the problem in today's yes. way of recording. We have a gap. We haven't closed the gap, and this technology will close the gap completely. <laughs> I love that. 